Hey everyone, what's up? Keysby here. So today we're going to be dipping back into Flanderies with a few rolling bits and some other cool stuff for you about the deck. So first thing I want to talk about is Flanderies normal summons and how they interact with non-targeting removal. This is especially relevant with DPE and also in the mirror match when one player has a live unexplored wins. As per the somewhat recent rule updates, effects have to activate in the proper place, meaning that a Flanderies monster has to be on the field at the right time to be able to activate its effect. Seems like a no-brainer, how could this not happen? Well, when interacting in a chain with non targeting removal, this gets a little bit weird, so I'll try to explain it with a fairly easy to achieve board state. Your opponent has a DPE, which does not target, meaning that your opponent chooses what to destroy on resolution of the effect. You have a set Dreaming Town. Please note, this has to happen in this order for this to occur. Your opponent activates DPE as Chain Link 1. You chain Dreaming Town as Chain Link 2. Now the chain resolves. You summon off of the Dreaming Town, let's just say Urbina in this case. Now Chain Link 1 is your opponent's DPE. They can choose to destroy DPE and the Rabina. Now the chain is resolved and you cannot resolve Rabina. Why? The long and short is because the previous chain has to resolve before Rubina's or any Flanderies monster's effect can activate if it's summoned in this way. Basically, this can occur if your Flander summon happens in a chain past chain link 1 and there is a form of non-targeting destruction occurring earlier in the chain. It would need to be non-targeting for this to occur so that the effect could destroy something that wasn't on the field at the time of the activation. I know this sounds a little bit confusing, but it's important to know, especially for the mirror match, because this will win you games. So let's get into how this occurs in a mirror match. Okay, so the most common way this occurs will be if you control unexplored wins, which is a non-targeted set into grave. You normal summon Eaglin. Chainlink 1 is Eaglin activating. A normal summon does not start a chain by itself, so the trigger effect of Eaglin is actually our Chainlink 1. Our opponent activates the effect of their own magnificent map to normal summon on our turn. So now, chain link 1 is our Eaglin, chain link 2 is their map, and the chain resolves. Our opponent normal summons their Flanderies monster. It does not activate yet, because we are still resolving a previous chain. Now our Eaglin resolves. We search mpen, and via wins, we send to grave our Eaglin and their normal summon for our mpen at resolution of Eaglin's effect. Now, our opponent's bird does not trigger, because at the resolution of the previous chain, it is no longer where it's supposed to be to activate its own effect, which is on the field. This can get confusing, and I can't really think of a great way to simplify it, unfortunately, but knowing this can win you mirror matches and will help you avoid losing out on your own bird activations. Let me know if, in the comments if you have any questions on this. I can try to make a follow-up to better explain. Um, the chain building in Flandery's mirror matches can get really wild and weird sometimes, and stuff like this is important if you want to consistently come out the winner. Our next rulings are a little bit simpler, but I've seen some confusion with it floating around, and they're both pertaining to unexplored wins. Far and away, the most broken part of unexplored wins, in my mind, is the fact that it sends a grave effect does not activate. I know I mentioned this in all my Flanderies videos, but this is huge knowledge to have. This means a few things. First of which, your opponent cannot Ghost Ogre this effect, relevant with that card seeing a ton of play. The second is that players, a lot of times, don't play around it properly. Here's a great example. Your board is wins and you have Eaglin in hand. Our opponent has Dragoon. We normal summon Eaglin. Chainlink 1 is Eaglin's trigger effect to search. Let's just say, for example, our opponent opts not to negate the Eaglin. In 9 out of 10 cases they would, but just to illustrate the point, we are going to say that they don't. Maybe thinking that, oh, I'll just negate the effect of wins to send everything to grave for the Tribute Summon. Chain resolves. You search for Mpen. Now at resolution of Eaglin's effect, meaning we are still in the chain that Eaglin started, we can summon the Mpen using Eaglin and our opponent's Dragoon, and there is literally nothing they can do about it, because wins just happens.
So in any board state with Eaglin and wins, once Eaglin begins to resolve, you're guaranteed to be able to remove at least one card from our opponent's field. This is also relevant in a match such as Dino, where you have something like Miscellanosaurus that only protects from activated effects. So you can use Wind's effect to send their monsters as our tribute materials even under the protection of Miscellanosaurus. You might have also noticed that I keep saying send, not tribute, in reference to summoning with the aid of Wind's. This is a huge distinction for a few reasons. The most common reason is in relation to Rise of the Mega Monarch. To get Rise's bonus effect of bouncing a card back to hand, we need to have Tribute summoned him using a Wind Monster as a Tribute. While the summons aided by Winds are considered Tribute summons, so we do get Ryza's standard effect, we do not actually Tribute either monster. They are considered to have been sent to Grave, therefore we do not get Ryza's bonus effect despite it being Tribute summoned. But, on the plus side, because of the way this works, it allows the deck to play under cards like Mask of Restrict, which prevent tributes because, again, nothing is tributed despite it being treated as a tribute summon, just sent to Graveyard. Lastly though, because of how this works, unfortunately, it does not allow us to play through Zombie World. So now, the last thing I want to highlight in this video is a bit more fun and will lock up a game pretty smooth if you have a bit of board set up for it. For this, we need Winds Live, Advent, and either Eaglin, or Mpen, or any other bird. Sounds like a lot, I know, but with the amount of surge power this deck has, it's not so bad. Plus, this is not something you'll do often in turn one, although it's really good to know in case you can. Our opponent also needs to have at least two cards on the field, so ideally we'll be performing this off a Dream Town. Again, I know it's a lot of setup, but stick with me. We activate Dreaming Town to normal summon our Eaglin. Now that Dreaming Town's chain is resolved, we activate Eaglin. Eaglin resolves, we search out Mpen. On resolution, we tribute summon Mpen with Eaglin and something from our opponent's field. Now Mpen starts a new chain with its effect as Chainlink 1. We activate Advent here as Chainlink 2, banishing the Mpen for cost. Chain resolves. We search Tukan off of Advent. Now Mpen resolves. Just to note, monster effects have to activate in the proper location. They can resolve anywhere, as a callback to earlier in this video. Because Mpen started the chain on the field, it being banished at the resolution of its own effect is irrelevant. So now we get our search, and then on resolution, we normal summon our freshly searched Tukan. Now Tukan starts a new chain. We resolve Tukan, ramming back our Mpen, and then on resolution, we tribute summon that very same Mpen with Tukan and something else from our opponent's field. And the best part is, we get another Mpen search, because it's not once per turn, and if our opponent has any face-up monsters left over, we can use Dreaming Town to Book of Moon their field, then we can recover the Tukon with its Banish to Hand effect and be able to recycle back Dreaming Town on our turn. So basically, off of this setup and just letting our opponent play the game, we've cleared minimum two cards off their field, landed in Mpen, gotten two search for our Flounder cards, and Book of Moon, any leftover monsters, plus have play for our next turn. So try this out if anyone ever says Flanderies is Statue Pass. This can also be done first turn with enough small birds or if you go second, but it kind of depends on your opponent's board and what you have to play through. So there you have it, some in-depth runes about Flander and one cool combo that you can go into. If you already knew all this, good on ya. Keep rocking the birds in style. But if you did learn something new here, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more in-depth breakdowns. Have a good one, everyone, and I'll catch you all later.